Are you tired of feeling overlooked and underestimated? Hi, I'm Tammy North, the Introverted Executives Coach. If you're an introverted executive or you're ready to rise to senior leadership, but you're struggling to be seen as a high potential, this podcast is for you. If you're like me, you're doing everything you can to fully lean into the experience of life. You're going for it in your career, your relationships, your family, and your overall life experiences. You're not generally satisfied unless you're making a difference, enjoying your spouse or partner completely, celebrating your kids, and creating a general life and career that you are absolutely in love with. Oh, but I also bet you know what I know. No matter how hard you try, and even if you have a similarly motivated husband and kids, things are never going to be perfect, not by a long shot. But is that really the goal? Are you going for perfect? Or are you going for no regrets at the end of life? I hope it's a lot more like the latter. Trust me, I am a recovering people pleaser. I get far too much validation from people telling me I did a great job. And I also have really bad days sometimes. And it's that people pleaser and that achievement validation that drives me to make things as close to perfect as I can, but then also simultaneously drives horrible thoughts and feelings when I don't meet the mark. Can you relate to that? The beginning of 2023 was one of the most surprisingly full times I've ever had in my life to this point anyway. And I mean that in all the good and bad ways. My husband and I purchased an amazing property in Southern California, which is everything I could ever have dreamed of. If you would have told me that one day I would live in a home like this, you know, especially back in my single mom days, I would have never thought it was possible, not in a million years. And due to my current executive level position, I do a lot of travel back and forth to Washington, D.C. and various other cities across the country. And I've also shared on various episodes that I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis about 30 years ago. And my MS is mild, but especially the older I get, it is certainly impacting my life. My neurologist scheduled me for a surgery to reduce one of my multiple sclerosis symptoms. And I kept rescheduling that surgery over the course of a few months. I think I rescheduled it three different times because of work-related travel or other important work-related events that I felt obligated to participate in. And as I was neglecting my symptoms, I was starting to feel like I was aging one year every time each month passed. And then right when we finally found the house we had been looking for, negotiated closing dates for the old house, and the new house, there was no denying that I needed to go ahead and get this surgery out of the way. I had pushed it off too long. And then one week before we were literally going to move into the new house, as we were packing boxes in the old house, my 15-year-old son broke his ankle in varsity wrestling, and we found out he also needed to have a surgery. The orthopedic surgeon said that he needed to place some screws to heal a growth plate fracture that my son had. And I told my son, hey bud, if you didn't want to help us move, you could have just asked. (laughs) But suddenly, even though I have a bias toward work and career and a definite internal desire to provide high value at work, I found myself with no choice but to focus almost 100% on my personal life for about a three-week period. Luckily, over the past few years, I haven't really taken that much vacation, so my available vacay days were definitely piling up. And due to the fact that I knew that we would be moving to the new home in you know, mid-January, I took only two days of vacation around Christmas and New Year's. But the part I did not plan on was how everything lined up exactly on top of each other so that all of these unusual and somewhat mentally challenging, not to mention physically challenging events lined up right in a row. I had also been asked to be a speaker at a major industry conference. And I had a great plan in place to make that happen. And I was planning that way ahead of time. That event was scheduled for about 30 days after all of these events were happening. Boom, boom, boom. But then one day, a male leader in my organization contacted me via email and let me know that they had decided to change the conference agenda and they removed my speaking portion due to my 
tumultuous life, they decided it might be best if they swapped the time and the agenda with another really awesome speaker in our industry. And I'm not going to lie, I was actually a bit relieved when I got that email. I had a lot going on and also as an introvert with everything happening, I really did feel relief. But still, I had already worked out a plan for that speaking engagement and I had received multiple commitments from three other leaders in our industry who were going to help me have some fun with my time slot. So I wasn't going to just be up on the stage, just another person standing behind a podium talking. I was going to celebrate other leaders in our industry at the same time. So in this case, sadly, I had to send my regrets out to the other people who were going to help me. And to me, this was pretty frustrating because I had a plan to execute everything. And I was really looking forward to letting other people shine. And I knew it was going to be a very engaging and educational conversation, but it's okay. We worked it out. And now I could go on with my relief and execute my personal events. But there was one other thing that really got me. The fact that this other male leader had described my life as tumultuous. This is a person who I think is absolutely one of the most professional, kind, and dedicated leaders I know. I mean, maybe he was being funny. Maybe he had some kindness behind his note, which I chose to assume that that was true. Still, he is very highly educated and could have selected any adjective or even left that adjective out completely, tumultuous. It was unnecessary after all. So I did choose to reply to his email and I said, I would not call my life tumultuous. I would just call this life. So why is this a problem? Why is it a problem that anybody called my life tumultuous during a three week period when any one of those three events, moving my surgery or my son's surgery, would have been unusual and driven a need for a personal pause. I think it comes down to this for me. If the roles would have been reversed and this male leader was having three big personal life events happening at the same time and I contacted him to offer him some support or relief, I would have never labeled his life with an adjective that had a negative connotation. I'm not 100% sure of his personal situation, but he definitely has a supportive wife and I believe they don't have any kids. Thus, he is completely free to go all in on work and often works 12 hours a day or more to remain the high achiever he is. But honestly, I also have an amazing family situation. My family circle, including my husband and kids and other family friends, allow me to go 100% on my career as well. That's the life we've built. The thing is, I'm also 100% certain that if this male person had multiple life events emerge that impacted his ability to go all in at work, I can't imagine anybody calling his life tumultuous. The way life is, it is never 100% perfect. It is never 100% good. Both him and other men like him will eventually have a time in their life when either their own health, their family's health, parents' health, somebody where they will not be able to let other people take care of it and they will have to pause their work focus for a moment and focus on the rest of their life outside of their career. And I have to tell you, this is the first time in a really long time where I had a flashback to my active duty Navy days when I was a single mom. And I had numerous people in my chain of command back then tell me that my daughter did not come in my sea bag and that I had better figure it out or maybe the Navy wasn't for me. And then they would turn back to their computer and finish watching the NASCAR race that had been rained out yesterday. Anyway, I did figure it out. I built a powerful support system that still exists today. I figured it out to the point that later when I was still enlisted, a chief petty officer who I was working for, who was also a really amazing leader, told me that I was a problem because I was making all of the young female sailors think that they could be a mom and be in the Navy. Essentially, I had taken so many steps and created so many backup plans to help my daughter and I survive that I was making it look too easy. I remember those days and the way male leaders around me made me feel bad for having a life outside of work, for being a single mom, and then other male leaders made me feel bad for figuring out how to succeed with a family including as a single mom. There was no winning back in those days. This was the early to late 90s. 
but I thank those days because they were building blocks to where I am today. And this is an example of a bias that seems to happen more often to women in the workplace than it does to men. Essentially, if a woman lets her life outside of work show its head at work, she is more negatively impacted than a male counterpart who has the same issues. I honestly don't think that this person put as much thought into his adjective in the email as I did when I read it. But as I said, he is a great human, an amazing leader, and generally seems to be a very fair person. But I do think that it highlights two things. One is how unconscious this type of bias can be. So use this as an example of how you might unknowingly be judged and that you should be aware of impacts and address it wherever you can. And then two, I want to bring awareness to how one misplaced word from a colleague you respect can impact you depending on how you choose to think about it. Remember, we can't control other people. All we can control is our own mindset and how we deal with it. When I was in the midst of my unexpectedly stacked number of personal events, I did have moments where I felt very overwhelmed. I was tired and I generally wondered how long it would take until things started to feel normal again. The first six weeks of 2023 felt like they took forever. And I am fairly good at managing my mind or at least having the self-awareness to know when I am allowing overwhelm. And I realize I also have the option instead to give myself grace. So as often as possible in this experience, including the day I received this email, I let the relief of the schedule change flow through me. I laughed off the tumultuous comment and I decided that it was okay for me to care for my family and for my own health in this period of time. As often as possible, I want you to separate your thoughts about what is going on around you from the true facts of the situation. This will allow you to have the space that you need to process what matters and what you can let go. A very wise person told me when I was young that you need to save your energy for the battles that really matter in the long term. In this case, the facts were that I did have these three personal events, two of which were not planned and not intended to occur during our move. I received one email and the literal words stated the intent to provide me with schedule relief. Of course, there was the one adjective included. That was also a fact that the adjective was on the email. Yet the only way that that one word had any meaning at all depended on the thoughts that I had about the word. So I decided to have some fun with it. I pulled up my thesaurus and I found a few synonyms for the word tumultuous. Here's some I found. Unrestrained, unbridled, wild, joyous, and festive. Wow, I love thinking about my life as unbridled. You know, free as a wild horse galloping through the waves, crashing upon the coastal plains. Not to mention wild, joyous, and festive. Yes, I'm all in on that life. There's this old Pam Tilla song from the 1990s that I used to listen to. It was called Mi Vida Loca, My Crazy Life. And the first line says, If you're coming with me, you need nerves of steel because I take corners on two wheels. Heck yes. This is who I am. I am all in on life and I'm all in on my career and it's not always pretty. Sometimes it gets downright messy, but still I always believe I'm going to figure it out. I have my priorities straight and trust me, my career is second, no matter what my husband might say some days. Okay, so here is how I want you to put this episode into practice this week. Think about something that's been on your mind, some circumstance that really frustrated you or hurt your feelings or even made you a little bit or a lot mad. What thoughts have you been having? Maybe you've been venting to your coworkers or to your best friend about whatever that is. Well, take some time and write all about the event in a journal or on a piece of paper and get it all out of your head and onto the paper. Write down what happened, what you think about it, and all the feelings you're having and what you've been doing or not doing has a result of how you've been feeling. When you're finished writing, go back with a blue marker and circle all the cold, hard facts. The facts are things that is something that was literally done, some, you know, what somebody literally did, and you could explain and other people would agree, or any words that they wrote or said that would definitely you you could get a jury of your friends to agree with. Then go back with a red marker and circle all of your thoughts about the facts. And these are all things that you know, something of how you felt, something that was your opinion. And when you're done, examine these thoughts. This is a great thing to bring to your executive coaching session. But even on your own, you can start to question if there are other thoughts you could have, or at least if there are other thoughts that you would like to move toward. The thing is, when you allow one person to say one word, and then you allow yourself to make it mean so much more than was likely intended, you end up holding yourself back 
from feeling better. You end up using your energy in a way that leads to buffering, you know, social media scrolling, snacking, too much wine, Netflix binging, whatever, whatever your form of overindulging is. So think about my example where I decided to think about my unbridled life, my wild, joyous, and festive life. Who do you think I walk into the world when I picture my life like that, like unbridled and wild and joyous? I can tell you that it is night and day, and that is a decision you can make in every moment. So what ended up happening? By mid-February, we were done moving, life started to feel normal, all of the boxes were unpacked in the new home, and the view is so incredible that it energizes me numerous times a day. I was healed from my procedure, and my son was having fun with his knee cart, racing the kids in the hallway at school, on two wheels, of course. I guess my whole family takes corners like that. But as for that major industry conference, well, as things turned out, about 24 hours before the conference started, another incredible leader had to drop out of the agenda, and they asked me to step in. So I tested my capability and wrote a speech that day, and yes, ended up speaking after all. It just was not exactly as I would have expected. Life is not always beautiful. Sometimes it is messy and crazy and even tumultuous, and I would not have it any other way. You can connect with me at Introverted Executive on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you're ready for executive coaching to help you achieve your biggest career goals, subscribe to my weekly Rise and Shine newsletter. There, you'll find out when my program opens for new clients, and you'll also receive weekly tips and activities to continue to make a bigger impact in your own powerful way. You'll find all the information and links down in the show notes. See you next week.